what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds today we are back with a car that we haven't seen on the channel in a while and that is the 1997 ford mustang gt that we picked up from iaa auctions for 450 dollars and all it needed was a jump start so here she is in all of her glory our 450 dollars iaa mustang gt with a five speed that needed absolutely nothing other than us getting under here and just kind of working the hood release and uh, a jump start. Now it has a new battery. Well, fact of the matter is there's something I didn't tell you guys. And I didn't tell you because it required making a brand new video <laughs> to do it. We found one major problem with this car. Now remember, it wasn't that long ago that we went with an SLP loudmouth exhaust on this. It sounds mean. We got BBK high flow catted mid pipes. Sounds awesome. We did the K&N cold air intake in a recent video as well. And after that, I took it out and I thrashed on it. I beat on it. I mean, I just hammered it so that I could get you guys a couple of very short and great clips of uh, doing some flybys and a couple short burnouts for video content. Well, after redlining it a few times, it became apparent that we had a problem. My low coolant light came on. I could smell antifreeze. I couldn't see where anything was coming out of it, but I definitely smelled it. And uh, sure enough, the coolant is, well, as you can see, it's very, very low. And somebody has been mixing Dexcool GM coolant with Ford. You can't mix the coolants, man. They're not compatible. Uh, needless to say, we need to drain this system. I am probably going to fill it with water and then drain it a couple times, and then I'll put some flush in it before I go back with regular antifreeze. What I have found, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys here. I'm not sure how well it comes out on video, but do you see right there where my finger is? You see the crack? Yeah, that is a problem, guys. That's not the only place. We have coolant leaking all over the runners. You're probably not going to be able to see it very well on camera. We also have a coolant pipe back here that is leaking as well. It's actually split. So let me see if I can get you guys in a little bit better where you can actually see right there. It's hard to see, but there is a crack right where my fingernail is, right there. There's a hairline fracture running straight down, and you can see it's actually wet down here. So what's happened is it is now misfiring. It's not running right. So needless to say, the car is not happy. It's leaking a lot of coolant. The coolant is leaking all around where the uh, spark plug wires go, um, and obviously leaking into the spark plug wells, which is causing serious misfire conditions, which is dangerous to drive the car like that, guys. You can you can seriously damage your catalyst, you can fuel wash your cylinders, you can blow up your rings. It's detrimental to the entire car to be running it and driving it with serious misfires like that. So with that said, we have opted to get us a brand new intake manifold. And no, I did not go with anything super fancy or super expensive on the intake. I got this for 109 or 119, I can't remember, dollars on Amazon. And it came right to my door. This is not the PI intake. Let me make that very clear. I did not go with the PI intake because I watched Chris Fix do a video on swapping to the PI intake, and he actually lost a little bit of power because the PI intake has wider runners. Now, I think you gain torque and you lose a little bit of horsepower or something like that. I'm happy with this car in its stock form. It was never a powerhouse. It was never a, a, a screaming monster of a car, but it's fun. It's fun and it's enjoyable just the way it is. So here's our new intake, and you can see it's got the new throttle body gasket there. We flip it over, it comes. You don't have to buy the, uh, the, the intake gasket set for it because this new intake already has all of this attached to it. It's good to go. Since we're gonna be down in here, it only makes sense right now is the time to do spark plug wires. And yes, I did, I did do good 
I got the uh, the Denso first time fit plug wires. We got the Denso uh, Platinum spark plugs for this car as well. Beautiful little little spark plugs there. I'm not sure exactly what all of these little screws are for. I assume we'll find that out later. I don't know what this plastic plate here is for. So again, I assume we'll find out later. The intake came with a new thermostat. I'm not sure what temperature it is. It's listed as an 88 degree Celsius thermostat. It came with a thermostat rubber O-ring gasket, and it came with this very soft, what I assume to be aluminum um, thermostat gasket as well. And while we're at it, I have a squeaking tensioner pulley. So I'm going to remove the tensioner and install this new Deco uh, tensioner pulley as well. So that's what's on the agenda today. We're not done with this car yet because I do have a brand new set of struts and shocks for it right here that I've been meaning to get to, but uh, I just haven't had the time. So stay tuned for that. I think as soon as we get all of this done, I am going to send it for paint. And while it is in paint, I'm going to order a brand new set of wheels and tires. And when I say new wheels and tires, I'm talking 17 by 10 on the back. Your guys, when she comes back from paint, you're not gonna recognize 17 by 10. <laughs> Let me tell you something, this car will have no issue hooking up ever in the future with tires as wide as that. So let's stop talking about it. First thing on my agenda is to drain the coolant. There is a petcock. I know that's a funny sounding name, but down there, I've already got a pan under it. I'm gonna let what coolant is left drain out. And I think we're just gonna get right into this. So step number one for me is going to be disconnecting the negative battery cable because there are a lot of little electronic things in here that are, we're gonna be removing. Uh, first is this strut brace right here. I'm not quite sure what size that is, but I'll tell you what, I am going to grab my electric ratchet and hopefully we can make somewhat quick work of getting that brace and some of these other components disconnected. As you can probably hear, we have the coolant draining and I'm going to just give these, these are 10 millimeters. Look guys, I know it looks overwhelming when you first stare at this, for you new guys anyway. Uh, you take a look under the hood, it looks like a bunch of spaghetti, man. You know, you just, you look at it and you're just kind of like, nah, <laughs> I don't want to do this. Let me tell you something, if you took this to a shop and, and had a shop do this job for you. Oh man, they, they'd rake you uh, they'd rake you over the coals, man. So it's good to know how to do this stuff yourself. It's good to know you don't have to rely on somebody else to do stuff that, that you should be able to do yourself. It's good to save money. And I think the best part is, is at least you know what you did to the car, man. When you send it to a shop, you never know what they did to it. You don't know if they did it right, if they did it wrong. When you do it, well, Hopefully you do it right, but if not, you got no one to blame but yourself. I think that is everything. Oh, uh, we have a we have a happy little module that decided to take up residence on our strut brace there. I didn't see that sitting there. Probably a cruise control module or something. Looks like it's just got a couple of eight mils on it and she will probably come right off. I was wrong. It was a 10. There we go. And off goes the strut brace. And now we can start getting in to the nitty gritty. I think the next thing I'm gonna focus on is pulling out the cold air intake that I just installed, which by the way, let me tell you, didn't fit in here very well uh, the first time. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this off of here. It's already shifted. I can see that very clearly. It's not sitting where I had it originally. So 
Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that or why it doesn't want to fit. Uh, sometimes that's just the way it goes though, guys. You know how it is. Let's see if we can get down in here and I think there's a, uh, man, I don't even know if I can fit that down there. Maybe, just maybe. Uh. Yep, there she goes. All right, don't lose your nuts and bolts. Bolts are just as important as your nuts, guys. Don't lose nuts, don't lose bolts. Now, you should be able to pull that forward and looks like this just pulls off here. There is one and I think this just slides off there. This comes off here and out goes the cold air intake. Next, I think I'd like to take off my heater hose. You know, if you looked in a factory service manual, there's gonna be a lot of instructions telling you step-by-step step exactly how to do this. I don't bother with those guys. Uh, maybe I'm foolish. There we go, yeah. Drain out of there. Get it all out. Um, and it's not because I'm arrogant or cocky or anything like that, it's truly not. I just don't have time to go through the step-by-step step, uh, step step procedures for this kind of stuff, guys. I don't. Most of it is self-explanatory. Most of it you can figure out yourself without an instruction manual telling you what to do. And that's just my experience anyway. Just keep track of your bolts and everything and uh, you'll be all right, man. You'll be fine. Take all of this off, get it out of the way. We definitely got to get this off of here. There should be a plug under there somewhere. We want to get this belt off as well since we're already over here. And that is going to be a half inch breaker bar, which I have one of those laying around here somewhere. You shouldn't need anything too crazy, but get you a half inch breaker bar and uh, uh, proceed to turn, push it towards the driver's side. Slide your belt off and you can pull that breaker bar right back out of there. At this point, I believe we have a couple 10 millimeters. Sorry if I shook the camera there. A couple tens on the bottom of this alternator here. Oh boy. Now I will say uh, on some of these alternators, they were grooved in the bottom. So you could, uh, I need my flathead. You could just pull the alternator out there we go, and see if we can get down in there. You don't want to break these connectors, at least if you can help it anyway. There we go. And the alternator is out. All right, we're kicking right along, man. Uh, and that's concerning. Things are just things are just going too good for me. <laughs> I, know, I don't know how to react to that. All right, obviously, uh, this little crossover PCV ventilation pipe here needs to come off. So take it off, we'll throw it on the parts bin there. Uh, you are going to have to remove all these plug wires, and yes, you should mark where they all go. I'm not going to, guys. It's not that big of a deal to jump on Google, look up the firing order, and uh, put your new plug wires on there. But you should, golly, come on now. You should definitely mark them, guys, for sure. Just It's one of those things where I just, I just get on Google, man. I'll get on Google and I'll figure out where these go later. So we'll get these uh, disconnected and uh, yeah, we'll continue from there. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is this module uh, that doesn't look like it's supposed to be here. It's really out of place. And it just occurred to me, this is the aftermarket cruise control module that no longer works. There's no reason for this to be here. I can take all of this out along. They've tapped us. They've tapped a couple circuits up there, presumably probably uh, one for the brake light switch so that the cruise control deactivates when you hit the brakes. Um, this whole module and all the pieces and wires associated with it, I am going to remove. Now, the next thing that I may attempt to do, I don't know if it's possible or not because I've never done it before, but what I would like to do, if at all possible, is obviously remove vacuum line, vacuum line, um, vacuum line to the FPR. I think the way this is looking, 
There is a main wiring harness bulkhead right here that we should be able to unbolt, pull the wire harness out, lay it on top of, uh, we'll have to take this off. I believe we take the throttle body assembly off, we can move it over this way. With the throttle body removed, that should leave the fuel injector rail and honestly not a whole lot more all the wires associated with it i think we can actually take the wire harness connector and the associated wires and stuff all around here and i think we could pull the fuel rail up and move it forward to the front of the car at which point we save having to disconnect a whole bunch of crap uh there is an egr tube back here there's a, I can't remember the name of this stupid thing back here, DTPFE or, or DTPE, something like that. Uh, you got to disconnect that. A couple vacuum lines, but I think if we can pull the fuel rail this way, pull the throttle body and lay it over here, we will have instant access to uh, hopefully be able to remove the intake manifold. This is honestly, no, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I know better. Every time I get excited and I say these magic words that I'm not gonna say, something goes catastrophically wrong. Now again, I'm all about saving time and sometimes I cost myself time by doing that, but it almost looks like all of these vacuum lines, vacuum to the EGR, vacuum to the EGR, I think that's an EGR pressure uh, solenoid, it actually, applies pressure to the EGR valve when commanded to open it. I think we can just leave, maybe not. You know what, it may be better just to go ahead and disconnect all this. What I was saying is I think we could leave all of this attached, uh, but probably best just to go ahead and disconnect it. There's the fuel pressure regulator. Pull this back. These are fairly durable lines here, so I don't feel too concerned with uh, gently gently though gently there we go move those out of the way and that's just one less thing for us to worry about we got the vacuum lines disconnected i do believe there's one more on the back of the motor right Ooh, that vacuum line is in bad shape that vacuum line's in very bad shape we're going to pay special attention to that and uh i think next we'll focus on getting the egr pipe disconnected from the egr valve all right i went ahead and cut the control module the cruise control module out of the car it's completely unnecessary at this point i'm going to take the wire connection off of the egr solenoid uh, there's going to be a tin hidden i'm going to set that to the side and then there's going to be a couple of eights on top of the throttle body right here Okay, set those to the side. Now I may be doing an extra step, but it looks like the only way for me to get really good access to the uh, EGR valve to disconnect it is actually to get that out of the way first. Now what I'll do is with it, okay. With it stuck out of the way, I can get some big old vice grips on there. And with any luck, it'll just come right off there we go yeah here she comes yeah i'm not sure that i could have gotten to this easily with that still on there and it definitely would have uh been risky might have broken something so i think it's just easier to disconnect it disconnect the cgr tube here and i think at this point we can uh disconnect the throttle body let's get it moved out of the way so before we continue on with pulling the throttle body off there's a couple connectors you want to get rid of i believe i'm not for sure but i think this is an idle air control solenoid this will be the throttle position sensor once that is done there is and i'm having a heck of a time with this one there's a uh there's a vacuum line on the very back side of the throttle body, and uh, she's giving me a little, she's old and cracked. Yeah, that's not gonna, it's not gonna go over well, is it? 
Jeez, Louise. Yeah, she's on there. Come on. We're gonna have to replace that, guys. So, there we go. Boy. Yeah, I have new vacuum line that uh, I will be replacing that with. At this point, it looks like she'll come off. We've got an eight mil here, an eight mil here, eight mil here, an eight mil there, and an eight mil there. So a few eight millimeters. We should be able to move this and the EGR valve out of the way. I'll start with the ones that are easiest for me. Now it's important to make sure when you're pulling these out, you keep track of ones that are longer or shorter than others. And don't lose them. So far, these are all the same size. We also have this uh, PCV hose right here, and that one looks like another one that's gonna give me a, a hard time, man. This car is not cutting me any slack. She's giving me no brakes at all, but uh, that's okay. We'll, uh, We'll make it work, man. She will not get the best of me. We'll go ahead and pull that PCV valve out and toss it down with the rest of the crap down there. There's three. We should only have two bolts left. One. And two. Okay, so all of these are the same size. That's good news. That makes life a lot easier. Uh, we'll put these together so that I don't lose them and I remember what they go to. And then I'm hoping that with this, we can just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's, to, oh, we got a connector holding us up here. Move that out of the way and then just kind of slide. I'm not worried about the paint because we're getting the car repainted. But, uh, you know, still try not to damage anything if you can help it. All right, next. One of the things I love to do before f pulling fuel injectors is just uh, kind of saturating them with uh, some spray. This is silicon spray. Believe it or not, this one quick step will make getting these injectors out a whole lot easier, guys. Uh, you could skip this step if you want to, obviously. I'm just trying to give you some friendly advice. I am one that likes to do as few things as possible to get a job done, but this is one step I will not pass up. I don't have a tool that I believe is going to work for this. That sucks. Um, but since I'm already in this vicinity, I'll go ahead and pull this heater hose clamp off. This is the only heater hose you're gonna have to deal with on the back of this intake. So just get that clamp up out of the way. And if all goes well, you can just kind of gently, without damaging your heater hose, <laughs> if possible, kind of grab onto it, give it the twist. Yeah, and if you're lucky, oh wow, the hose nipple came out of the cracked intake. Okay. Well, this is going very well so far. Well, the next step for me is trying to figure out how to bypass disconnecting those fuel lines. I'm not sure that we can, uh, but I'm going to try. So first, we'll need to disconnect our temperature senders, just like that. Um, on this side, we have that stupid DPTFE, whatever the heck it is. We need to undo that. This is a ground. We'll disconnect that. We have four fuel injectors. Disconnect those. And um, we're, we're getting somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but the goal is to be able to maneuver this wire harness around so that we can actually get the fuel rail off and move the fuel rail up and over this way. Now, again, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just trying to figure out the best way possible to bypass because uh, this is a mess, guys. This is truly a mess here. I just want to be able to maneuver things around to the point that uh, we can get this fuel rail. Yeah, we may be able to. We may be able to actually take the four. There's one, two, three, four deep eight millimeters. And if we can get this fuel rail up, pull it forward a tad, we should be able to lay it 
over towards the uh, passenger side fender. And that right now is my goal. All right, so. Boy, those are, uh, those suckers are kind of long. Two of four, moment of truth is coming. Something tells me there will be something that's gonna cause us to not be able to do this. Three and... Four. Now, when it comes to removing the fuel rail, if you just grab it by the rail and start jerking it, <laughs> uh, that can actually cause problems, guys. It really can. What I like to do is I try to rock each individual fuel injector out of its respective hole so that we don't lose the gaskets on the top just like that. And actually, that was far too easy. That side is completely undone. I'm telling you, a little bit of WD or your favorite penetrating lubricant will go a long way. Yeah, there's two, three, and come on, there's four. There's all of the fuel injectors right there. Now, can we get around this EGR tube and just slide? Ugh. If this doesn't work, well, I tried. I think it will though. I do, I think we can kind of just slide this whole thing over to the passenger side fender. Yes, you're gonna lose a little gas. Be sure to lube those uh, O-rings, clean them up. Thoroughly clean all of this stuff up. And uh, so far, it's working. <laughs> I say so far because it, it only takes a, just a split second for something to go catastrophically wrong <sighs> come on man we don't have to what's holding this thing up here it's these stupid fuel lines this has got to be one of the dumbest designs i've seen in a long time aside from uh aside from that this is uh we just got to be able to maneuver it out of the way just enough just enough to uh gain access to this intake. Okay, I think next on my agenda, the only thing left keeping me from getting this intake off is right here where I'm tapping. It's kind of hard to see, but that's that weird DPE or DPFE. Ooh, don't lose it, don't lose it. There's two bolts. Now I've seen people uh, recommend that you remove this by taking the bracket off on the back. And the bracket on the back is kind of a bear to get to. So I was kind of hoping that maybe you could just pull this out of here, which you can, and maybe just, maybe? Yeah, I think we can. I think we can maneuver it out of the way without having to get to the back of the engine to take off that bracket. Guys, I think that's it. I think we are down to pulling the intake bolts and the intake, fingers crossed, will slide right out. All right, so I'm gonna kinda start in the middle. Oh, good Lord. I don't know if that's supposed to be that tight. <laughs> Golly, man, that was wild. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, maybe I missed one on the other side. But it actually looks like this, this one has a, 
Maybe I did miss one on the other side. This one has five that hold it on, not four. So uh, I'll have to go back and check and see if I missed one. This is a tight fit when it comes to working room, guys. That's a fact. Okay, so we got five on this side. And uh, unless I missed one, I only saw four. Now there's only one, two, three, four that I can see on this side. So I don't know. I feel like there should be five on this side too. So I'm almost concerned that somewhere here I've missed something. Huh. Okay, well, I'll be very gentle to start with before I get my negotiator out. And, uh... Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, I certainly feel like there's another one hiding here somewhere where there is something else still holding this on. It doesn't look like it, though, guys. I'm nervous. Maybe I should just tap it. I mean, it is already broken, so it's not like I could really break it any worse, right? Oh. Okay. The plastic part is moving. Ah, 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 I see it. I see it now. Okay, I know what I did. That's why you just, sometimes you just gotta really pay attention, guys. <laughs> really pay attention. Um, I'll show you what I did here in just a second. It looks like she is ready to come out with the exception of this, the thermostat housing. Oh. Wow. That is a very long one, and you may have to take this one off too. I don't know. We'll do it just. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So the thermostat housing has equal length bolts as well. There we go. Ooh. And apparently they use that to hold the thermostat, uh, not just the thermostat housing, but to hold the intake to the engine. Now is the moment of truth. Can we maneuver this thing out of here? <sighs> Boy, I don't know. I just, there's a lot of crap in the way. Let me move these plug wires out of the way. And, uh, you know, it almost looks like you have to remove the spark plug wires first. And I was really trying to avoid that. I wanted to save the plugs and the wires for last. Not that it really makes any damn bit of difference, to be completely honest with you. It was just kind of personal preference, especially with this, uh, with this EGR tube in the way. Ow! Frick! That hurt. I'm not gonna lie. That sucked. That got my finger real good. That EGR tube's a bear. All right. The old intake is out. Let's see what she looks like down in the valley. Well, guys, when you get this far, this is what you should be left with. I'm glad we did this because I found another common failure point on this that has failed. Hasn't failed catastrophically yet, but it's, it's definitely to the point that it's about to. And I highly recommend whenever you're in here, uh, you definitely focus on that hose right there. So hopefully you can see it's got a hole in it. Uh, that's no bueno, man. There's a hole right there. You can see it's been, uh, yeah, right there. Very clear now, right? And it has been leaking into the valley. There's a little drain right back there, it looks like, in the back of the valley. Uh, where it has been running right out the back right there. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad we got this far with it. Um, what happened up here? I don't know. My guess is these gaskets have probably been leaking. Ugh, she's nasty, guys. But, uh, yeah, that hose right there is getting replaced while we're in here. Well, you know what time it is now, right? It is, it is time to not destroy things. It is time to start pulling... These plug wires, one at a time, and let's take the spark plugs out. 
can see exactly what they look like. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's nasty. That's nasty. Look at all the goo. Ugh. That's gross. So I will sit this on the ground and compare it to my new plug wire so I can get a better idea of which ones are which. And it looks like this one right here is going to be the winner. So I'll set that to the side. Let's get down in here and Uh-oh, that didn't want to fit. This is a 5 8 spark plug, is it not? Uh-oh. Well, that sure doesn't seem to fit a 5 8 I love it. We're already starting with trouble. It fits this, so it should fit what's in that hole. Tell me that spark plug was tightened. Surely. What is going on here? This is a magnetic. It wasn't tight. <laughs> Guys, you saw it here. I literally took this spark plug out without even using a ratchet. I didn't have to use a, a ratchet. This is an what is this, an Autolite XP? Uh, yeah, I don't even know what that is. It's an Autolite XP, guys. There she is. Doesn't look too awful bad. But, uh, I can't lie. I'm a little... Ugh, little on the concern side that I was able to reach down in there and turn that without... Uh, this one, too! <laughs> the spark plugs in this are loose. They're not, they're not tightened. <laughs> Here's another one. Oh my, my Lanta, my Lanta, look at this. Okay, that's two that weren't tight. But what I'm gonna do, because I don't wanna lose track where these plug wires go, uh, one at a time, pull that one out and uh, let's see if I can, yeah. <laughs> what? This is unbelievable. Whoever did the plugs on this didn't, uh, they didn't tighten these down. You shouldn't be able to just put a little twist and, and, and pull these suckers out. Ooh, that one's a little, that one's a little nasty. Here's a, here's the next one. Right there. Yeah. Hey, it was due for a tune up anyway. And obviously it was due for. Oh, wow, that's, yeah, there's the misfire right there. There's the misfire. This plug by the rear, uh, oh boy, getting into that could be, oh wow, it's full of antifreeze. It's full of antifreeze, okay. Hmm. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, that one I can't get out. Here's what I want to do. I think... I'm gonna hook my shop back up, guys, and siphon that one out. And here is the last spark plug. Why is it not focusing? There we go. Yeah, there's the last spark plug we pulled out, covered in antifreeze. We got four more to go, guys. I'm very curious to see how this plays out. All right, just like before, we're gonna... That's by a... Uh... By one of the coolant passages too. Boy, these are just these are these are not even like this isn't even tight like at all. Uh, the spark plugs don't look particularly bad, but when they're full of water coolant and they're not even torqued down, um, oh, okay, that one is tight. We finally, yeah, there we go. There you go. We've got, <laughs> we've got two so far that I would consider properly torqued. That spark plug doesn't look bad either. Go ahead and shove that back in there. We got two left, guys. 
Okay, that one feels like it's reasonably tight. I don't know what this chunk of crap is right here, but it's like some gas, ugh, some gasket material or something. Get that off there. Okay, that wasn't tight. Never mind. It was just too tight for me to twist off by hand, but that wasn't tight at all. That spark plug looks all right, too. So we probably could have gotten away without doing plugs on this, but it's one of those things, guys, you're in here already. You're, ugh. See what I mean? Let's see. This one's tight. There we go. Yes. Okay, we had a few. I would say maybe if we're lucky, 50% of the spark plugs were actually torqued down and 50% were uh, so loose you could take them out by hand. Yeah, spark plugs look fine. Looks like the engine's burning fuel just fine. Uh, so I would say that this engine's actually in really good shape. It just needed a, need a little service, man, and that's what we're here for. Let's get it done. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the mating surfaces all cleaned up. Uh, you can't see, but that hose is replacing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There is a bracket. There's a bracket on the back side of the motor right here that holds this metal line in place. And, and I thought getting to the 13 millimeter on the top of it, on the back side of the head, was hard. Well, underneath that, they have a 10 millimeter that's even further down the head that is next to impossible to get to with any sort of tools at all. Um, it is a knuckle buster. Let me just tell you that. So be prepared when you uh, when you do this, change that hose and uh, good luck. Good luck with, with all of that back there. I am going to, uh, I'm gonna try to scoot this little thing in here and hopefully we can kind of, you know, guide it in and move this out of the way. Come on, and slide it under. Come on, stay out of here. Slide it under. Actually, that, that, that was, that was awesome. That was awesome. That actually worked out really well. Um, I'm not going to say anything else about it because I already know uh, how this works. Um, you start saying how, you know, the magic word these are to work on, and before you know it, something catastrophic happens, and I'm not trying to do that. So what I will do is I will start throwing our bolts where they go. Remember, they're all equal length, but the ones on the passenger side, for whatever reason, are 10 mils. The one on the driver's side, if I remember right, are, uh, what are they, 13s? Yeah, so take your time. Guys, I'm not gonna make you watch all this. It's quite literally reverse order of taking it apart, so why don't I finish putting this together? And we'll see what happens when I'm done. Guys, we are almost finished. Everything is hooked up now, with the exception of changing this pulley. And, uh, well, cold air intake, strut bar brace, plug wires, and installing the alternator. So that's really it. It's, it's just a matter of the, the last very few things. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not... Yeah, she's bad. Maybe barely, but she's bad. She's making noise. So, double check. Yeah, he's fit the same. Nice and quiet tensioner pulley now. Matter of uh, bolting on the tensioner pulley, bolting on the alternator, plug wires, and a couple miscellaneous plugs, and guys, should be ready to fire up. See how she runs. Well, guys, uh, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that was a that was a bit of a job. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. As you can see, my shop is a complete disaster, man. It's a wreck from swamp vet and from working on, I've, I've been working on a lot lately. So uh, there she is. 
she is all back together. The only thing missing, as I'm sure you can see, is the strut brace. I figure, you know, before we go through all the trouble of putting the strut brace back on, I should probably make sure everything, you know, starts and runs properly, because I would sure hate to bolt that massive thing back on here, only to find out, you know, I forgot something, which I didn't. Well, I shouldn't have said that. I, I'm pretty certain I didn't forget anything. The strut brace was left off intentionally. This wire thing for the, you know, an old sub system, the, the, you know, amps and all that stuff. I'm probably going to just clip that, cut it off, man, because there's nothing in here. I don't intend on putting anything in here. Uh, assuming this car starts and runs and we don't have any more leaks uh, because it doesn't leak any oil or anything. I think the next stop for this car is paint and body, man. I think it's time to send her down to send her down to Mako, get her a fresh coat of paint. The color, I'm not going to tell you. As I said before, I've also got these fresh headlights and corner lights for it as well. Uh, but we're going to wait to do that till it gets back from paint. Get this thing all one color. What color? Who knows? Then those uh, 17 by 10s in the back, and I think the fronts will be like 17 by 8s. Gonna require some pretty wide tires. Let me tell you something, she comes back with a fresh coat of paint and some new wheels and some new tires. Boys, she's gonna look mean. She's gonna look real mean. And then, well, I don't know. Then, maybe we'll go ahead and do the shocks and struts. I also need to fix the odometer. There's a, a, a gear in there that goes bad it's not that hard to change it's just one of those pesky little uh issues i've got the gear the worm gear and the regular gear right here that's all it is and i think you may have a part number here somewhere yeah odometer gear repair kit oem 30302 this is it man just it literally pops out the back <laughs> of the of the instrument cluster so what do you guys think should we fire it up because it is five o'clock in the morning and uh i gotta edit this video because it's what i don't even know what day of the week it is I, I think it's sunday i'm pretty sure it's sunday now yeah so five o'clock in the morning on sunday i need to edit this video for you guys and i need to go to bed all right moment of truth it's either gonna run or it's not, or it could blow up, who knows. Oh, let's hope none of that happens. Make sure we get a... Now, I did... one thing I forgot to mention, I did not, I did not put coolant in it yet. I'm not going to yet. Cycle it a couple times. Why did the doors keep locking and unlocking? All right, I think we got good fuel pressure now. What do you guys think? Ready? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, that's right. I dumped a bunch of carb cleaner down it, didn't I? I forgot I cleaned all the uh <laughs> all the intake runners. Probably gonna smoke. Yeah, let's open that up. Well, boys, she's running. She's running, she's running good, or running well. That pulley is not squeaking anymore. All right, you know what? I'm not gonna push my luck, man. I'm done for tonight. She sounds good. Give it a little rev.
enough for me, boys. I'm tired. I ain't gonna push it because it doesn't have any coolant in it. I can get to that tomorrow. For now, I just wanna go to bed. Guys, I appreciate you watching more than you know, man. Uh, cross your fingers that I don't have any problems with this thing when I finally go to put coolant in it. We're not taking it for a drive tonight. Like I say, guys, it's now past five o'clock in the morning and I got, I don't know how much footage I got to edit, but it's its a lot. So I need to get this done and go to bed. I do thank you all for watching though. I hope y'all enjoyed my Christmas video and I hope everyone had a good Christmas, man. New Year's coming, it's approaching very quickly. Don't worry, I am working on some New Year's things for you guys. I've had a few questions like, did we win that, uh, that what year was it? 60 something Impala, I don't even remember anymore, guys. Uh, yes, we won it. And no, they didn't approve the bid. And I bid on it again, and they didn't approve the bid. So I, I ended up just walking away from that one. It's probably going to be more work than what I wanted to deal with anyway, especially with all the projects I got going on right now. So that one is gone. The twin turbo BMW that I tried to get. I'm telling you, there was one in my Copart walk around right here in Oklahoma City. The other one was a long way away. Uh, but there was one right here, a black one right here in Oklahoma City that had minor front end damage to the hood and the grill. It sold for $2,000. I should have got it because the twin turbo BMW, the 335i that I was trying to get, that sucker, I bid it up to almost $5,000 before I had to just step away from it, man. $5,000. Uh, there is another car that I'm not going to talk about right now, but it's, uh, it's something. Okay, it's a five, I think it's a five speed. Pretty sure it's still a five speed stick with an LS1. And I think, <laughs> I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. We just gotta figure out a way to go pick it up. I haven't quite got that part figured out right now because I've got a million things happening, including Wildfire contacted me and said that lift of mine is on its way. It could be here any day. So the last thing I wanna do right now is go running around to go pick that thing up. but. I promise you guys, we got a lot of things coming to the channel. This car is obviously going in for paint in the very near future. We've got the Swamp Corvette. It is also getting ready to go in for paint too. I'm probably gonna send them both at about the same time, maybe even on the same day. Uh, at that point, I'm trying to work something out with IAA, possibly to send Swamp Vet back through IAA auction and let's see what we can get out of it. Why do I not wanna keep it? guys? I have no interest in, I've got a million cars, honestly. Uh, last count was 15, I sold two, that's 13, and I'm on my way trying to pick up two more. So 15 cars, too many. I can't drive that many cars, there's no sense in having that many cars. You know what's gonna happen? You end up with that many cars, they end up sitting outside where mice, rodents and stuff get into them, tear them up again. What's the point in fixing up these cars if we're just gonna let them sit out in the field and go to waste? Uh, they should be on the road. Somebody else should be enjoying them and driving them. Uh, Swamp Vet, I can promise you, man, that car will be a project for many years to come. Uh, beyond me, once I'm done with it, I can assure you somebody else will buy it. It'll be a good project car for them too. Same thing with this. That's what these cars are, man. My job is to take them, bring them home, do what I can to get them back on the road again, and then sell them. Hopefully we can make a profit at the end. Since we got Swamp Vet for nothing, and I don't think we have all that much in it, including the cost of the parts car. I don't see how we couldn't possibly make a profit on that one, guys. So stay tuned, because I got a lot of videos. The Ford Tempo, yeah, I know, boo-hoo, the Ford Tempo, but I do plan on sending it down to get a little bit of body work, a few dings worked out of it, and paint on that one as well with a new bumper. I got a lot going on, guys, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. Tell me what you think, man. She's coming back to life. Slowly but surely, we're getting it there, guys. Stay safe out there. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one. I look dark on screen. Very dark. Huh. Looks very bright back there, and I look really, but whatever. I'm, I'm out. <laughs>